uh, depends on what you like. Eh? This personal preference is one, but as professionals, we kind of agree that we, we look for balance in coffee. You know, we, mm -hmm. we look for acidity, flavor, uh, balance, aftertaste. Um, and if, you know, we, we, we try these coffees together generally on a table and we score them by points of like intensity, like how intense is the flavor? How is the, the acidity, the overall balance? And if the coffee scores well in all these, these um, aspects, then we can agree that, okay, this coffee exhibits a lot of good characteristics. And this, then we can agree it's a good coffee. Welcome to this new episode. And today I am here with Robin. How are you, Robin? I'm very well. How about yourself? I'm very good indeed. So Robin is the owner of Bubba's Cafes, two of them, and also is very passionate about coffee. So today we're going to talk about coffee. First of all, I'd like to ask you, Robin, what is your story in life up until now? Um, still trying to figure it out, but what I figured out so far is that, yeah, I'm passionate about coffee and I made a living out of it. That's very nice. And originally you're from Holland, is that right? Correct, yeah. Southern part of the Netherlands, small village. Um, grew up in the countryside, then started traveling around a bit. And, but eventually, like you, ended up here in Copenhagen. I never envisioned myself having restaurants, uh, especially younger, at a younger age. I didn't get why people would spend so much money on eating out. But over the course of life, you know, I've changed and ended up working in a coffee shop in Melbourne. Truly enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and after that, I decided to just stick with what I like and hospitality and coffee. It is very nice. So uh, Melbourne, you just went there, like uh, you know, some young people they decide to go to Australia for yeah. a year with the easy visa to get exactly that. So I was traveling in Asia, and instead of going back to the Netherlands um, and go back to uh, IT, which I was studying at the time, okay, I decided to go to Australia and test my luck there. And I was lucky enough to be hired in a very uh, good coffee shop with skilled people. They taught me a lot. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And uh, you were a barista there or what kind of job did you do in the coffee Waiter, shop? Waiter, barista, manager. Okay, okay, and okay. I had a girlfriend at the time. We were living together in Melbourne. Um, but she grew tired of Australia because she was living there longer than me. Mm -hmm. She wanted a change. So she was Korean, and I said, she didn't want to go to Korea, I didn't want to go to the Netherlands. So we decided on Thailand. Okay. And that's how, we, how I ended up here. And you've been in Thailand how many years now? Living seven years, I would say. 2015 I moved here, yeah. But I've been visiting since 2006, so it's about 16 years. Okay, 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 mm. okay. So I see the passion for uh, sort of working in hospitality and coffee. And yeah. as well, uh, sort of a little bit of a passion for traveling or foreign countries, is that right? Yes, yes. But when, once you have a business, the traveling becomes a little bit more challenging. So I've traveled more before I had my business, but it's okay. I take my breaks here and there, mainly short breaks, like a week or two weeks or three weeks to get out and still follow the passion of travel. Okay, so yeah. obviously if you are in Copangan, you know Bubba's because uh, you know both shops are very successful. It's possibly the best uh, coffee shop in Copangan uh, in terms of the quality of the coffee, but also the environment, the team, uh, everything looks, uh, is very cool, right? Mm -hmm. Bantai, uh, it's, you found a location there, you've always been there, right? Yeah, so it was 2015. I moved here with a girlfriend at the time, right? And we had to find the meaning of staying in Thailand and that meant getting a job. And because I had all this experience from Australia, the most logical thing for me was to do what I did there. Mm -hmm. So we slowly start like exploring the options of renting a building and starting a coffee shop. And the first three months we looked everywhere. Well, we couldn't find something that felt right. Mm -hmm. So we left for a little break. We went traveling in Europe, and came back. And um, as soon as we arrived on the island, we took a taxi. And in the taxi ride on the island, we saw this building empty. It was the Bantai shop. So the same day I called the landlord, shake hands, and that was the start of it. Cool, because of course doing a business in Thailand, you know, many people do it, yeah. it can be done. It was quite easy for you, no hiccups. Mm. Surprisingly easy actually, after all the stories that people warn you for, <laughs> about uh, landlords increasing rent or horror stories about contractors not finishing their job. No, I was very lucky to have a smooth, uh, a smooth start. I did get a very good coffee machine to start with, because it's the cornerstone of a coffee shop. So I'm yes. like, okay, I'm gonna get the Lama Zocco. For those who know coffee, they know Lamazoko. It's a nice machine. 
Um, and I started with my girlfriend in the kitchen. She was a good, uh, good cook. So she helped me out with recipes. Yeah. By, by the way, I'm not a good cook. I just, I'm very passionate about restaurants and service, but cooking is not my thing. Coffee is. <laughs> so she helped me with the, with the cooking and I did front of house. So I was making coffee and serving people. Indeed, because in Bubas you have a very nice uh, sort of brunch kind of food. You got, you know, different salads. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's uh, the eggs, uh, many different mm -hmm. style of eggs. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's uh, certainly a good place for brunch. And, um, and uh, well, the coffee, you say, is the cornerstone of every coffee shop. And that's, I like that, this idea. Yeah. And uh, I mean, can you tell us about your experience with coffee? First of all, uh, where did you travel uh, to see the coffee growing, uh, to mm -hmm. connect to the people? I've been around many different coffee trips, but in terms of like where the coffee grows, my most experience has been in, uh, in Thailand, especially in the northern part, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, and Dak. It's where, um, where a lot of the Arabica coffee grows. Many different origins. I, what I personally like at this point is the Ethiopian coffees because of high elevation, comes bright acidity, generally speaking. Uh, okay. So personally, I favor Ethiopians at the moment. But there's good coffee to be found in, in any producing country. And you say higher acidity is a good thing. So what are the characteristics of very good coffee? Uh, depends on what you like. Eh? This personal preference is one. But as professionals, we kind of agree that we, we look for balance in coffee. You know, we, mm -hmm. we look for acidity, flavor, uh, balance, aftertaste. Um, and if you know, we, we, we try these coffees together generally on a table and we score them by points of like intensity, like how intense is the flavor, how is the, the acidity, the overall balance. And if your coffee scores well in all these, these um, aspects, then we can agree that, okay, this coffee exhibits a lot of good characteristics. And this, then we can agree it's a good coffee. Very nice. But it doesn't mean that it's, everybody will like it. Yeah. Yeah, because so. personal preference is very important in there you know, liking something. That makes sense. And also the two main categories of like Arabica and Robusta, you mm -hmm. say, yeah, that uh, I think traditionally in Asia was more uh, Robusta and uh, in South America more Arabica, but these days you say Arabica is, is grown everywhere, right? Yeah, because so there, there, is, there is large um, Robusta cultivation in Indonesia and Vietnam. Okay. Um, but if you look at, at uh, Thailand, uh, Myanmar, Laos, even the south of China is producing Arabica coffee. Mm -hmm. Because the main difference between the Robusta and the Arabica coffee is, is the, the elevation that's needed to be grown. Okay. Robusta, it's very strong against diseases mm -hmm. and um, climate conditions. That's hence the name Robusta. It's very uh, robust, right? Yeah. The Arabica is a little bit more sensitive to these things. And the higher you go up in elevation, the, the less pests are there. And the climate get, tends to be a bit cooler also at nighttime. And that's a different variety of coffee is the Arabica. And we favor the Arabi Arabica more because of the complex flavors and the acidity that comes with these elevations. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. And typically, I mean, do people like blends of coffee? You do mix or just single? Uh... Again, this is a personal um, preference question, right? Some people, they do like a blend. Um, Blends are first made for consistency because, mm -hmm. you know, every year the, the weather changes, uh, the harvest can change. And if we always do like a single origin from one farm, the flavor can balance a little bit, can vary like a wine, right? When you have like a, a wine, the, every year can be different. But as soon as we start blending these things together, we can create a consistent product. And this is how blends actually enter the market to make like a flavor that a brand can identify itself with. Itself with. Like Starbucks, for example, they have yeah. the Starbucks blend. And then if you choose certain origins and you blend them together every year, you can get a very consistent product. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And this is good, you know, if you want to reach a, um, a big target market or uh, again, create a, a brand flavor. And then you have the single origin. It's where you like showcase a single farm, region, variety, whatever you want to showcase. And these can have varieties in flavor. So it's not about being good or bad, it's just differences here. Yeah. Yes. And of course, then you have the organic coffee versus, mm -hmm. I know the coffee is a crop that is sprayed quite a bit, is that right? Yeah, um, it's not native to, to Thailand, it's not native to South America. It's been taken, I believe, during the colonization, where um, maybe it was the Dutch actually, they went to East Africa and they, they spread this to Asia, to Indonesia, hence the Java variety. They took it from 
East Africa, put it in Indonesia, but also went to South America. And over the last 400 years, it's been cultivated in, in many places. Again, it's not a native crop, but it's um, a good cash crop for a lot of farmers where they can make some money. So finding like, do you work with like smaller producers? Yes. So the whole fair trade and organic certification, it's a lot more um, paperwork and corruption in reality mm. than it really translate into a better product. There's a lot of small families growing coffee in Thailand, right? It's like it's a small family who own a plot of land and they put coffee there to supplement their income. Mm -hmm. But in order for them to be certified organic, they need to go through a whole process of paperwork. They mm -hmm. need to work with um, organizations who supply certain type of fertilization. Okay. Um, it's just not reasonable for these small families to go into this. Doesn't mean that their practices are truly organic if they just put the coffee there and they water it and they decompose their own organic waste. It's 100% organic, but without the certification, yeah. So this whole fair trade and organic, it's it's a trend, right? Over the last 10 years, it's definitely a good thing, but it's not always fair for everyone in the supply chain. And that's why maybe you have to know the farmer directly, go and visit the farm and yeah. that's the if you can. Yeah. And it could be a lifestyle, maybe when you, you know, like maybe you have a, a bigger chain. I don't know if you, I'm going to ask you later, mm. but, you know, even with, the, with this one, maybe you'll have more time. You can go in, um, you know, as a hobby, mm. travel and, uh, you know, do the, the tour of uh, coffee plantations yeah. across the world. What a cool thing to do. It's cultural, it's interesting, it's off yeah. the beaten track sometimes because you have to go into the countryside. Yeah, it's like a working holiday. I'm already doing it. In season, I will travel to the coffee farms in Thailand. Um, if I travel outside, it's more for coffee festivals and competitions. Oh, to, okay. To see friends or associates that I know who do this. Um, but in Thailand, yeah, the coffee farms are a very good trip. Even for you, yeah. you know, in season. And uh, from November until the start, it starts in November, late November until like March, the coffee harvest. So for anybody who is in Thailand during this time, travel north, go to Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Tak, Start asking around, you're going to be able to find and visit a coffee farm. It's really nice. So cool uh, to see how they actually you know, produce the coffee. Will be. And uh, of course, then uh, you have the coffee, but then you have to roast it. That's roast the way it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, for you guys over there, I'm going to show you a little bit how it looks like. So the coffee, when you harvest it, it's a small round uh, cherry, actually, and inside are two beans. We harvest this cherry, we dry it, then we take the bean out of the, the mucilage or the dried product and we roast it, right? And before we roast it, I don't know if you guys can see it, I'll put a little bit more. It's actually like a, a small green pea. Like, a, like a peanut almost. Like a, a peanut? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they stick normally two beans are together in one cherry. Anyway, so we take this raw coffee and like you said, we roast it, right? We have like a, a big rotating oven, it's called a coffee roaster, with a flame in the bottom, like a, um, a circle, uh, I forgot the name, one moment, a drum. So you have a, a drum, right? And it rotates on top of the flame, but we put the, the heat under it, it rotates and there's air sucking through it. Because if you start roasting it, there's a lot of gas, um, smoke, small skin from the coffee that's still attached and we need to take that out of the system. So over the course of like 10 to 14 minutes, depending on your roast degree, we're going to transform this green coffee into roasted coffee. Yeah, which is the one we know. And this is the one we can drink. Yeah, so and actually what happens with this coffee, like the green coffee still has a little bit of like um, moisture inside. So we drive out the moisture so it becomes dry and because of all the heat, this bean and the, the the cells they try to expand because of the pressure and at around 195 to 200 degrees it like pops like a popcorn mm -hmm. it's not as loud it's not as like aggressive as a popcorn but you, you, can hear it, yeah? you definitely can hear it mm -hmm. yeah and actually from the point that it pops the first time this coffee becomes drinkable yeah and if you keep roasting it another 20 degrees more a little bit more it will pop again uh, it's called the second crack and from that point it's considered dark roast coffee Cool. So nowadays, most coffee you'll get in the specialty coffee shops, it's somewhere between the first crack and the second crack. And the more high you go into this ladder towards the second crack, the more um, bitter it becomes actually. Okay, 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 okay. And also the sweetness will come with that also. So it starts off from the first crack, it's like acidic, and acidic floral notes, like a little bit more light. And as you caramelize more, it becomes more bitter and sweet. 
What coffee do you like? Myself? Yeah. Oh, I love an Americano, uh, but I'm not sophisticated enough, to be honest, to go for a, a specific origin or quality. So I have, uh, you know, Bubba's is uh, possibly my favorite mm. coffee shop here. So I drink your standard uh, coffee, yeah. which is? This is a blend, actually, okay. to get back on the question, because we, I've tried many different things. I tried the single origin, I tried the light roast coffee, but what I found that people, they... They have a certain idea about coffee, which they drink somewhere else. And this is actually, it should be a little bit sweet, a little bit bitter, and not too light. For okay. me, I like light because I've tried many different ones and I like to taste a little bit of the origin in the coffee. It's not completely roasted away. Okay. But not everybody likes this. So now for Babas, I've created a blend, um, only Thai coffee, Arabica, Chiang Mai and Thak blend, roasted like a, towards the second crack, but not quite there. Okay. It's like a crowd pleaser again. I try to make most people happy. Yeah. I am most people and I love the coffee there indeed. Yeah. And you know, I have a history of drinking uh, coffee with milk. Mm. So in Italy as a breakfast, even uh, you know, you are a 10 years old, you already they, they, you start with that. Mm. So your breakfast is milk and coffee with mm. biscuits, yeah. It's not particularly That's healthy great. maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, for many years I was drinking, you know, cappuccinos and lattes, etc. But then, you know, I stopped drinking coffee for uh, five years because I had a bit of a burnout. I was very stressed out. Mm. So any kind of stimulant, even the tea I couldn't drink, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, coffee is one of these things that you love so much. And of course, mm. if you drink, you drink it three, three days in a row, the fourth day you really want it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I got rid of coffee completely. But now I started again about four years ago and I drink uh, one coffee a day. It used to be, uh, you know, latte and now I'm going to Americano. Mm. No sugar, so pure bitter, you know, like uh, black coffee, and uh, mm. that's my, my favorite at the moment. So if you go around and you try different black coffees everywhere, you taste different. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you perceive the difference? Is it the intensity or the flavor? So or, hmm? there's a place, you know, I usually go to Bubba's, I go to Indigo, mm. and I go to Dots sometimes. Mm. I go to other places as well, but yeah. these are my main ones, yeah? And Bubba's number one for me. Um, I Dots is also good coffee. I yeah. like uh, these are you know probably Bubba's and Dots are my two favorite ones. Yeah. Indigo third, in like, terms of flavor, but you know um, again there's no good and bad within coffee. You know yeah. there's, there's always personal preference, and you have to find a cup you like and, and stick with that. Yeah. Yes, and also I choose a coffee shop because of the coffee, obviously, mm. but also because of the vibe. For yeah. me, the vibe, number one, first of all, I'm from a country where coffee culture is important, you know. Mm. We meet friends in the coffee shop, we always there. And in Italy, it's like coffee bar. So they're coffee shop during the day and they also sell alcohol in the evening, usually. Um, but I love the environment, which is a little sleek. So it's to be like more than sleek, I like, you know, and it needs to be uh, just the energy of the space. It's difficult to explain what yeah. the energy of the space is, but... And also the team, you know, I really like the people that work in the coffee shop, if they're happy, if they're relaxed, uh, if they're doing a good job, they're serious about what they're doing, but, you know, with ease. Mm. And uh, this is kind of an atmosphere that uh, you find, you know, in your, yeah. your places, uh, for sure. It's important that people enjoy what they do, especially when we wake up in the morning, we go for a cup of coffee. We don't want to be faced with people who are not happy in life, you know, we're very um, open to... to to input in the early morning. So if you go somewhere and people are smiling and happy, you know, it's a good side of the day. And, yeah, and come if on. the coffee is good too, like it's, yeah. Particularly when you go back to the same place over and over again, because I like the idea of having a local coffee shop mm. that I visit regularly, you know. And uh, yeah, and uh, it's it kind of part of my routine, it's part of my life. I really value yeah. it, particularly in a in transient island like Copangan, mm. things moving a lot people changing, having the same place that you go for coffee every morning, it it's really does add value to my life, you know? Yeah, I'm great we can be part of that. I think that's yeah. a great thing about coffee shops in general, you know? It's, uh, it's the fact that uh, they are a part of people's lives in a kind of special way, mm. you know? And uh, that's a lovely thing, which is more ethereal if you want, is just beyond uh, owning a business, you know? And tell me about your, uh, do you want to talk about the new restaurant that you set up in Tangsala? Yeah, we can, we can touch the topic. It no looks problem. very beautiful, yeah, it yeah. looks very wild, yeah. uh, jungle-like. Huh? It's, uh, it's, it's a big challenge, yeah. So I was doing the coffee shops and I've been doing this for five or six years, so the challenge was kind of gone. Like, I really enjoy doing it, it's still daily, but I was time for something new for me. And I was like, okay, let's try a restaurant. 
so I started out last year with renovating and making the IDs, finding a chef, and we opened up now three months ago. And it definitely is a challenge. It's a lot more work than a coffee shop. And, um, but I'm happy that I've done it because it pushes me to yeah, get out of my comfort zone, learn new things, try new practices. So yeah, so this is Papa Cook and Tom Salah. Come and visit. Yes, it's a lovely place, very beautiful, and I think you've done it up very, very well. Yeah, Thank like you. you really yeah. put effort into doing it up. The menu is very good. We've, we've eaten with my girlfriend, and uh, yeah, I really recommend it as well. And also, I remember the Adiao coffee shop. Now it's mm -hmm. very popular, always packed. Yeah, mm. but it took like a couple of months. It took a few months before it started getting more traction. Than, more than yeah, a few I months. Remember, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, it did, and also it was called differently in the beginning. Because first I had Babas, and at the time same, like, oh, I want a new challenge, so I make a new brand. And it was called Palm Society. Ah, Many people have right. forgotten this. Ah, um, that's right. For sure. So after one year of trying and figuring out something new, I realized that sometimes just sticking with what you know and people already like is just a more easy and natural way of doing. So after one year of trying something new, I followed advice from people around me, and I just changed it to a Babas in yeah. Hajiao. Yeah. And ever since that moment, it just took off, and now it's busy there. For sure. And yeah. uh, it's interesting, as you said, you know, you have these uh, successful shops and now you want uh, a new challenge. So you're going into the restaurant. And um, first of all, yeah. tell me, I mean, Copangan is a bit of a special place for me. I, it's my place where I want to live. What makes Copangan special to you still? It's the, the lifestyle we have here. Many people who come here, they, they experience this. It's the freedom. It's the people here, it's the food we eat, it's a nice balance of everything we experience here in our daily life that makes me not want to change to any other place in the world at this point. Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, do you have uh, any kind of like plans to have a bubas in Kota or in Koh Samui? Or? Nah, no, people ask me this question, <laughs> right? Like, hey, you should go to Koh Samui or why don't you make one in Bangkok? But um, I'm happy with what I have here and it's already a lot of work and I asked myself the question, would it make me more happy? Maybe, maybe not, but Copenhagen is my home and um, I'm just very happy to do my business here. And also you, know, you're quite a, you look like a, quite a young guy, right? Mm -hmm. So you probably have 30, 40 years ahead of you of um, productive life. So let's see what happens. I hope less. <laughs> <laughs> you want to retire young at some point? No, yeah? no, like I'm, it doesn't really feel that I'm working every day also because I really like what I do. So it doesn't feel like I have to wake up and go to work, but if I ask myself the question, do I see myself running a coffee shop for the next 40 years? The answer is probably no, you know, like people change, you know, priorities change, but I'm very happy with what I do now and I do it passionately, but another 40 years, I don't think so. What I will do, I don't know. Where I will be, I also don't know. Well, you know, the yeah. future is unknown. All exactly. we have is the moment. Yes, uh, yeah. Well. Cool. Yeah. Well, Robin, thank you very much you know, for showing up and uh, you know, telling us uh, your story. Very much appreciated, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you.